Hello there, kitties. I'm Kari, the vacuum tube witch. And last time I told you we are going to make the chassis for the dirty dozen uh, amplifier. We've got all holes marked in it and it's time to drill the thing and uh, time for a little update on the Rattle Caster project. The Rattle Caster I've got uh, I replaced uh, the missing the missing key and the missing machine head uh, and uh, and the string I've also set the scale length uh, on the guitar and uh, like you can see here there was a little problem with uh, with setting the the scale length of uh, of the bottom uh, E string and uh, this means that uh, I might uh, have to get a uh, different uh, set of strings for it. I was planning on uh, restringing the, the guitar completely, but uh, first, uh, first I wanted to do the the truss rod adjustment, uh, and I did. I wanted to do the scale length adjustment, and I did. <laughs> So, uh, next step on the Rattlecaster project will be restringing it and uh, and doing some uh, some tweaks on the on the setup uh, of the guitar. But uh, let's get to the bench and uh, drill the holes uh, in the chassis for the dirty dozen. And let's start by. Doing the four millimeter holes.
So that's for the first stage. A lot of small holes and a lot of aluminum filings. Now for the second stage. This is gonna take a lot longer. And this is where the ultimate diameter will be will be reached. I will need a 4 to 12 millimeter stepped drill. And uh, I'll be doing the, the front panel, the back panel. And then I will use the 4 to 20 step drill and I will do the tube sockets. And the last thing I will do with a 4 to 32 step drill will be the hole for the main filter capacitor. That's gonna be this one. I'm using a vintage one that I tested and uh, and it proved uh, good uh, for for use. Those uh, those parts uh, are often uh, much better when it comes to durability. Of course, you have to assess this uh, on a. Uh, on uh, every on every every case is different you have to assess this uh, for uh, every part because uh, some of them are more, are more prone to failure others are not let's uh, let's do some more drilling Also, I there's also a little problem because the the paper tends to cling to the to the drill and it uh, catches the the filings. So uh, I will probably have to take off the the paper type at least uh, for part of the panel and uh, do it uh, successively to avoid any unnecessary damage I guess that using a sticky foil might be a better solution at least uh, some kinds of sticky foil. Now it leaves. Uh, now it leaves a sticky residue. Let's try without uh, without the tape here. I just noticed that I will also need a larger diameter on the front and back panel, larger than uh, just 12. I will need 16 on this side and uh, 18 on, uh, on the other side. So let's change the, the drill now.
gonna deburr the drill and uh, and make the 12 millimeter hole on this one and uh, 16 millimeter hole on uh, on the next. And here I will start with 18. I uh, I made four millimeters here by mistake, and I will correct it uh, when I put the power socket in, and uh, I'll just use a larger washer. Such a lot of drilling leaves them bent in quite a messy state. Gotta drill the holes for the two bases. For the tube sockets, I mean.
And there's the last hole. The last and biggest for the filter capacitor. And then there will be a lot of cutting and also a lot of filing those holes because they have bars. So, let's do it. I will have to correct the, the, the height uh, of the draw while uh, I'm doing it. The larger the diameter, the harder it is uh, to, uh, to drill the hole, the, the more material it needs to remove. It, uh, it will have to put a lot of work into it. And that's it. That was a lot simpler than I thought. I will have to deburr this hole. I will have to make it uh, 32 millimeters rather than 30 because the outer parts of, uh, of the cap, uh, they just don't want to go into it like I would. Oh, it was just one of them bent and that's why they didn't want to they didn't want to go but i will enlarge this hole to 32 the the maximum uh, diameter that, uh, that this drill allows And this one I will have to remove with, uh, with a file. I will also debar the, the smaller holes with uh, a hand drill because it's much more comfortable to use. Some of them uh, I will still have to debar using a file because I cannot reach them. I cannot reach the inside diameters of uh, of those holes so i have to use a round file to to do that time to do some cleaning on the bench there's a lot of birds okay so the workbench uh, is kind of recombobulated and let's do the the filing job of those holes I just want to get rid of the, all the birds. Uh, might use uh, a piece of wood to lie under the, the chassis. This is gonna take a lot of work. I 
I might also use some uh, side cutters to remove uh, excess metal. Try to remove uh, excess metal. It's, uh, it's not as easy as I thought. Just a teeny tiny bit.
large holes are a lot easier to do because you can put the file at a flatter angle and it will remove the, the burrs much more effectively. This is gonna be a lot of boring work. I will do all those small holes of the camera. I will also have to enlarge all the all the quarter-inch jack holes that uh, they need to be 11 millimeters rather than 10. I drilled them at 10. I wouldn't drill them at 12 because otherwise I would have uh, then the jack uh, just uh, moving in the hole. I would have to turn the, the nut uh, extra tight. So uh, for the time being, let's uh, let's start with. Uh, Deburring the the tube socket holes with this uh, little drill. It's not gonna take a lot of work. I didn't uh, clamp it correctly.
Okay, so uh, it will be time to remove the bears on this one. I will use a half round uh, file. Just like this. And it does a very nice job removing the bars. gonna do it on uh, both sides because this was the largest diameter on the on the drill bit it was the last step so there was no higher step uh, to remove the bears on this side Yeah, that would be this. Uh, just a slight correction on this edge. Pretty nice. So, time to do the rest of them I'll do it on camera just to show you the entire process uh, of uh, making an amp chassis by hand with love was volume production I would probably go for CNC milling but uh, it's just a one-off one-off design that I didn't e even uh, do in uh, a uh, computer-aided design program I did it uh, on paper I, I did it all by hand in, in my brain the two holes that I need to enlarge
check with the socket every now and then. Almost there. That's it for this one. Just time for a little deburring, but but not that much as uh, enlarging the holes already took uh, care of a lot of deburring that I would have to do. And it's time to check whether those sockets will, will fit uh, next to each other like I wanted them to. It's perfect! So we've got the input sockets already done. Time for the output socket, effect loop socket and the rectifier switch. Almost too much. <laughs> oh, 
almost there. Just some deburring. Those holes will also take some deburring. I will use a fire on this side. Maybe in the, in the half round one. And after I make the rectangular holes for, for the socket and uh, for the transformers, I will uh, scratch the aluminum with, uh, with uh, cleaning, with, uh, with this uh, typical kitchen implement. This does a very good job of uh, of uh, scratching aluminum. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, if those kinds of scuffs uh, from a file can be can be done away with, but uh, but this uh, I will f I will do a nice job of uh, of cleaning and scratching the the aluminum around the holes. I also need to drill the, the holes for the for the tube sockets. Looks like 18 millimeters uh, is still a little bit uh, a little bit too small for those for those sockets. So I need to enlarge uh, 
the chip socket holes. Even if just a teeny tiny bit. Testing every time uh, if the if the size is right already. That's half of them. more and that's it gonna test all the sockets have to bend some of the pins uh, inwards so that they can go through a hole and I will also mark the holes for the mounting screws on, the, on those sockets needs a little bit correction because uh, there might be a fraction of a millimeter difference between the diameters of uh, of every socket which means that if i tested it uh, on one then it doesn't really have to work with another
that's uh, that's with uh, reusing the the vintage parts. I will be doing a hack chat today on Hackaday about uh, about this very issue with uh, using uh, vintage parts and uh, doing the vintage electronics thing. Still need some work. That would be it. Remove the reminder of uh, of the masking type. Yeah, let's, let's place them uh, in such a way that uh, that the heater faces the the middle of the chassis. This is. Uh, gonna be imported for the ECC83 or 12AX7 tubes and it's time to mark the holes and and use the center punch and uh, I will take the drill press again and drill the, the holes for for the for the tube socket screws, automatic center punch. And time for some more drilling. With a three millimeter, And like before, I will need to deber those holes. Let's just take a larger drill and and do it by hand with love. Also, gonna deber the transformer mounting holes. The holes in the middle, those are just uh, technical holes for for driving the the saw blade that I will use uh, for cutting the holes. Time to deber on this side as well. And 
that would be it. The next step would be cutting the rectangular holes, cleaning the chassis and uh, scratching it to give it a nice surface finish. See you in the next one.